Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to another punch shreddingly brilliant episode of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show that may cause undue side effects including headaches, depression and bleeding from the anus. This week was, to put it rather bluntly, a massive sack of badger balls. We've got lots of stuff going on in the tech world, lots of new smartphones and other bits launching and frankly not enough time to cover it all and also drink heavily. Frankly it's a proper state of emergency and I need a pint stat so let's crack on with it. Roll credits. Expert Weekly! So first up this week, while we teased us all with a look at its shiny spangly new premium bendy blower, the Mate X2. This absolute beast has a 6.45 inch exterior screen but you can yank it open to reveal an 8 inch monster inside in case that 6.5 inch wasn't satisfying enough, fnar fnar chuckle etc. Both of these displays are 90 hz OLED panels with a crisp resolution over 400 pixels per inch, so perfect for your media shenanigans and everything else. The Huawei Mate X2 sports a gorgeous wedge shape so it balances nicely in your hand when it is splayed open. I thought this thing is a proper Godzilla at 295 grams. You better start pumping those weights if you're going to pre-order it, get the old guns back in shape. You got Huawei's fresh 5 nanometer Kira 9000 chipset stuffs in there as found in the Mate 40 phones from the end of last year with a reasonably beefy 8 gigs of RAM in backup. And as you'd expect from Huawei, this major dick waving when it comes to the camera tech, you've got a 50 megapixel primary sensor here, a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle, and then you've got a dual zoom lens setup. That's a 12 megapixel telephoto lens with three times optical zoom, plus an eight megapixel super zoom lens with 10 times optical zoom. And combined, they can max out at 100 times zoom, just like them Samsung jobbies. So far, so very lush, and the specs are rounded off with a 16 megapixel selfie cam, a 4,500 milliamp battery, and either 256 or 512 gigs of storage. Plus, you get a stereo speaker setup when it's split open, and Bluetooth 5.2 support as well. But there's no headphone jack. Oh, f that for a laugh then. The Huawei Mate X2 also has dual SIM support, but there's no mention of memory cards, unfortunately, which I know is a deal breaker for some. And on the software side, the Mate X2 will rock a bit of a MUI 11, a motion UI, and that's sat on top of old Android 10, sadly. Uh, and of course, there'll be none of that Google services stuff, which again, may put off a lot of potential consumers if the Huawei Mate X2 ever makes it over these sort of parts. As will the price, to be fair, which begins at a rather meaty two grand. Ouch. I mean, how many kisses of Malibu can you smash through with that? Definitely, that'll keep you going until the end of lockdown, and then some, unless you're a massive pisshead. On this week, Realme also took the opportunity to properly launch its new GT flagship smartphone, which it had already kind of teased in the past, but I guess it's a bit more official now. And the Realme GT, where the GT stands for Generous Todger, potentially, is a 6.8 inch proper unit with a Quad HD OLED screen and Snapdragon 888 smarts. Those specs haven't been fully revealed yet, but you can expect 8 to 12 gigs of RAM, a triple lens camera setup, and the latest Android topped with a tasty bit of Realme UI. All wrapped up in a pretty vegan leather design, just like last year's Oppo Find X2 Pro. And apparently you can expect to see the Realme GT hit stores on March the 4th. I did ask Realme to clarify if that included the UK and they haven't got back to me with an official answer yet. So we'll have to see, but I'd imagine it'll probably be coming this way a little bit later in time. And also this week, oh God, oh Christ. Yes, Motorola has launched another phone. Oh, oh. oh God, where was I? Oh yeah, so the Moto E series is still apparently alive and kicking with this fresh new Moto E to the power of 7i power, uh, catching him. And packed into this plastic slab is a 5000 milliamp battery, a 6.5 inch HD display, a basic MediaTek chipset and a dual camera with 13 megapixel primary lens and some of that infernal macro bollocks. Kel surprise, and it's coming to the likes of Amazon and Argos here in the UK for just 79 quid in the coming weeks. Oh, and in case you just can't get enough of Motorola, by the way, my full Moto G30 review just went live uh, yesterday, I think it was. Uh, so definitely go check that out. It's the, probably the best Moto G series smartphone I've tested out in a while, definitely after the rather lackluster G9 Plus. Uh, so yeah, have at it. As if all that shenanigans wasn't enough, Oppo also revealed this week that its funky rollable smartphone, which it's previously uh, launched, will support its new wireless air charging tech, which means that it can charge up when it's placed up to 10 centimeters away from its power pad. That's not quite as terrifying as Xiaomi's new air charge tech, which we discussed a couple of weeks back. Uh, hopefully it means it won't toast your marshmallows when your phone's sat in your pocket. Although to be fair, if it only works at distances up to 10 centimeters, you'd have to be practically humping the power pad in order to get the phone charging up. 
get that juice starting to flow. And that's not the end of it either, because Coal Pie's new company, Nothing, will be starting a crowdfunding campaign on March the 2nd, apparently, and it's looking increasingly likely that their first product or products will be audio-based, as a partnership with Stockholm-based Teenage Engineering has been announced. And Qualcomm has also been sued by British watchdog company Witch, apparently, over alleged anti-competitive behaviour, and if the lawsuit is successful, it could mean that anyone who bought certain Samsung and Apple devices in the UK from October the 1st, 2015, could be entitled to up to £30 compensation. whoopity doo I mean, it's not exactly enough for a wild weekend in Weymouth, but, you know, it's a couple of four-packs at the very least. And that's not even the ruddy end of it, but uh, time is a ticking, so now it is, regrettably, time for the part of the show that's about as coherent as an angry Glaswegian after two litres of homebrew scotch. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Uh, let's start this week with Salzen, who says, Why do you call your audience kiddies? Um, well, you can blame that on one of my uh, all time heroes and inspirations, a true role model for society in general, The Crypt Keeper. God damn, I used to love that show so, so much. And apparently, M. Night Shmelly, Sh I can never get his name friggin' right. Uh, he's supposed to be rebooting it, although I think that's been in kind of like studio limbo for about two, three, four years or something now. And let's face it, it would probably be cack. Anyway, I mean, just look at the new Twilight Zones, they are not good. And of course, the great thing about the original Tales from the Crypt was they're just super schlocky, super dumb, all of the gore and terrible jokes and all that, and yet they still managed to get some decent celebrities in there. I still remember, like, Joe Pesci being in one of the episodes. Like, Tom friggin' Hanks was in one of them, albeit for, like, literally about three minutes. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Junkie228 says, I've never once thought about the fluid dynamic implications of pissing on a moving train. I mean, seriously, they should be teaching that shiz in physics, GCSE. None of this boulders rolling down hills bullshit. You know, bollocks all of that. Just teach me how to piss on a fast-moving JNER train without dousing my trainers in urine. Uh, next up, GJ Abraham, potentially JJ Abraham's less famous sibling, says, if you want a rough train journey, try the Penistone Line in Yorkshire. It's like being on the Starship Enterprise when they're being shot at. You know, it actually gives me an all right idea. I think these train companies are missing a trick. What they need to do is like rent everyone a VR headset as they're getting on the train and then sit down, you put your headset on and then it's like a f***ing Disneyland ride, basically like Star Tours style. You feel like you're zipping about in outer space or something. What you're actually just clattering over some really piss poor rusty old track just outside of Milton Keynes. Although I guess that in a toss up between that and the other popular train activity of drinking 10 cans of Stella. Yeah, let's face it, the alcohol is always going to win, isn't it? And next up, TC uh, says, can we get an office slash studio tour? Um, well, I mean, that wouldn't take f***ing long, to be fair. Okay, we're going mobile, people. Uh, apologies, may cause nausea, just like those friggin' trains. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is basically <laughs> my studio, what you can see right here. I've got some, like, uh, geeky comic book stuff going on over here. Uh, I got some uh, some tech over here that I'm uh, either gonna review or I've I've just reviewed, and also a, a colourful monkey because why not? It's close up, close up of the monkey, and then yeah, I share the rest of the room with my daughter. Uh, hence, not none of this stuff is mine. Those those curtains, not my choice. Uh, these dollies definitely don't belong to me. Uh, apart from Veronica, good old Veronica, poor poor misunderstood Veronica. So that's it, that's my studio. Um, so yeah, not particularly exciting, not exactly an MKBHD setup or anything like that. Maybe one day, who knows, but I guess it's better than the blank void that some YouTubers shoot in. Next up, Matt says, uh, Mate, what happened to the Moto G10 Plus? Because the G9 Plus was average to say the least. Yeah, very true. I'm not sure if we'll get any more G-Series Plus or Power models. Uh, we've obviously just had the G30, which is kind of like a G10 Plus. Although, who knows, we might get a G40, a G50, whatever else mod will the plans to launch in the next 12 seconds. Uh, next up, Kungsek says, hello from Sweden. Hello, Sweden. Hope you guys are doing well. It's probably cold as shit over there. I'd imagine right now. I still don't know how to say hello in Swedish, which is really bad because I've seen tons of those really bleak, depressing Swedish crime drama things. Um, I dare you to say Fredagsmus next week. If you do, I promise to tell you what it means after you see it. I mean, you can dare me to say it as much as you bloody like. It doesn't mean I'll actually be able to fucking say it. Fredagsmus? 
Fidogsmus? I, I, I've got no idea. Um, I mean, what does it mean? Jizz on my bald head or, or something? <laughs> something like that. And next up, Benji Bob says, I need a new phone. I've got a budget of 400 quid. I was thinking either the OnePlus Nord or the Google Pixel 4 a 5G, which recently dropped to just 399 quid. Yeah, definitely a good little price drop there. Um, yeah, both of those are fantastic smartphones. I've done a best phones roundup under 400 pounds, so go check that out. I'm also gonna be publishing a best 5G budget smartphones at the very start of next week, which will include a lot of the, the best ones around that price point, so go check that out too. Uh, next up, Thomas Parker has got an idea for a new Netflix show. It's called Ant and Decayan. Ant McPartland has fallen on hard times and decides to become a grave robber follow him on his hilarious hijinks. I mean, that does actually sound an awful lot like a Viz comic. Uh, I've kind of got an idea of like a Weekend at Bernie's style romp. Uh, so he's, he's dragging a corpse uh, through the big market at like 3 a.m. and then they both get dragged into a club by a couple of couple of girls or whatever and they're having a bit of a boogie and it's like oh triple vodkas buy one get one free don't mind if I do and while he's doing his shots and having a bit of a boogie some Geordie lad is busy chatting up the stiff and then I don't know gets dragged off on some sort of like stag do uh, shenanigans or something or other could 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 definitely work has potential uh, next up David says behind her eyes on Netflix is brilliant yeah looks like one of those kind of moody suspenseful thriller type things uh, I mean I haven't watched anything good for a long, long time. I've got so many anime box sets to catch up and I've only just started watching WandaVision, got two episodes into that so far. But touch wood, just one more week of homeschooling. Get the fuck in. So hopefully I'll be able to actually, you know, not have to work until 1 a.m. and all weekend long. I'm actually be able to sit on my fat ass and just binge a couple of box sets. And next up, Jonathan says, I'm replacing my mum's Motor C Plus classic and looking for something more powerful with full HD display, decent battery life and probably fairly stock Android. Uh, well, if the Full HD display isn't like 100% a must-have, then I definitely recommend the G30, which I just reviewed, as I say, yesterday. Uh, 159 quid, I believe it is, and you've got a really, you know, a perfectly decent display, great battery life on that thing. You get a couple of days on a single charge, no problem. You've got that stock Android and everything, and it's reasonably beefy too. Uh, next up, another Irish uh, follower, Calvin O'Donnell, says, I live like 10 minutes away from Muff. We beat the football team there a few times. Good stuff. And the Muff Festival apparently isn't very big or great, to be honest. Oh, man. So that's big thumbs down for the Muff Fest. That's a real shame because, uh, I mean, frankly, it is an astonishing name. So it's probably... It almost seems worth it just for that, but uh, yeah, if it's if it's got mixed reviews. And yeah, anyone who didn't watch last week's show might be a little bit confused uh, by that, but... Oh well. Uh, Baldy Head says, on the subject of muff, and it is a worthy subject indeed, I own and use several big muff pie guitar effect pedals. I had a dozen muffs, including a metal muff, a Russian muff, and a triangle muff. I mean, metal muff sounds like a tragic antagonist in a Marvel comic or something. Uh, more muff correspondence as well. Bog Lizard says, after you visit muff, you should explore my anus, me anus? which is in Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, it kind of sounds like Xiaomi went off the rails and got Shane McGowan to, to start naming its smartphones. And the Xiaomi Mi Anus. Yeah, I mean, is Connecticut worth visiting? Because I've been, I've been like all around there. I've been to like New York, Massachusetts, basically everywhere apart from Connecticut in that general sort of region. So any viewers from Connecticut or who've been to Connecticut, definitely hit us up in the comments below with the best things to do in Connecticut. If they involve drinking and rude place names, then tops. Uh, next up, Android the Addictor. Uh, sorry if I've got that completely wrong. Says, uh, love your videos, been subscribed for a while, and I personally find your British accent so posh and delightful to listen to. Uh, well, I don't think I've ever been described as posh before, but I'll certainly grasp that compliment with both hands. And I better make this the last one, because again, time's just completely disappeared uh, this week. Uh, Ian says, sticking to the alcohol theme, uh, could you do a review of some beer drafting machines bored of drinking from a bloody can? Yeah, you and me both, mate. Definitely well sick of that. That's what I've actually started buying myself. I've started growing my, uh, my beer glass collection so I can feel like I'm actually drinking in a pub rather than just, yeah, swilling tinnies non-stop. And yeah, as soon as I get booze spurt, off the ground you can 100% bet your ass that that is going to be one of the first things I do just reviewing booze and booze related products uh, but right now the tiny amount of spare time I have is just actually spent drinking occasionally I multitask and drink while crying in the shower or something like that but yeah there's generally not much leeway but anyway a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week uh, please do leave your comments uh, down below and I'll smash through as many of those as possible in next week's Textbook Weekly coming once again at noon 
on Friday. Hopefully we'll have lots more tech news. In fact, we almost certainly will have lots of tech news. I know of at least one tech launch that's going to happen next week, which I can't talk about because I'm embargoed right up the wazoo. But stay tuned for uh, unboxings, reviews, all kinds of good shit next week. It's all kicking off proper. But have yourselves a lovely weekend and hopefully see you next week. Cheers everyone. Love you. Thank you.